guys, and welcome back to Making Finances Sexy. It is me, Rose Shore, aka the Red Queen. Come down the rabbit hole with me. I'm a realtor here in the Phoenix Valley, as well as CEO of Chronic Luxury and a financial consultant. It is my mission to help you build multiple income streams, do it most efficient as possible for your budget, live your dream life, and just all in all, enjoy the life you have. And with me, of course, is the wonderful and talented Miss Jessica Lay. What's up, everyone? I'm Jessica Lay, your Rent Rave owned realtor and certified instructor with 101 Financial. It's my mission to help you transition from renting to home ownership, no matter your current situation. I'm here to be your personal finance coach and first time home buyer specialist. Yes. And today, uh, talking about making money online and building multiple income streams, we are going to talk about how to save money on software when you're first starting out. Yes, that's very important, especially when you're starting. Obviously, you don't really have that cash flow yet, so why not find the easiest and less expensive route? Yeah, for sure. And a lot of times it's because like whatever you know, whatever platform you're using to learn how to make money online, like they of course have their own affiliations with whatever software platforms they use. And so it's so easy to get drawn into the like, oh, well now I have to buy this and now I have to buy this and now I have to buy this. And it's one of the reasons a lot of online online marketers um, kind of fizzle out and die at the first like three months because they invest all this money into this stuff that they really don't need. And then they really aren't properly either how to actually market and so it becomes a downward spiral and then it becomes well this program lied to me because it said it was this much but didn't tell me about all these extra costs um which to be fair you know can be a program problem there's a couple of programs that have gotten in trouble for doing pretty much exactly that but there are lots of ways to avoid that and so the first thing you really have to do is identify what you need and search out free alternatives to maybe the one they're telling you and don't overbuy so one of the biggest mistakes is, oh, well, this guru says I need this. So I'm just going to buy all this stuff and you get really fancy, uh, really tempted with the fancy tools and everything. But make a list of must haves versus like, oh, maybe down the road, this one's got way more you know, functionality and go from there. Yeah, definitely. Whether it's launching your new business or a side hustle, even any creative product, I think having what you need and just what you think you want later doesn't really apply. Like you can always get things later, find a new sock later that works, but just focus on now and prioritize the function. Like think in terms of productivity, your communication and marketing, like what do you need to get this project off of the ground? Yeah, and especially thing in terms of like, is this more advanced than I currently am, right? Because a lot of times, like, go high level is great, um, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend that a beginner jump into go high level because it's really an advanced tool. So really make sure it's what you need. And then use free trials. Like free trials are great because it gives you an idea of what the software can do. And then from there, you know, you can either shut it off before the free trial ends and come back to it or using the free trial, you can be like, you know what, this really is not for me. And now I know. And then you saved a bunch of money. Yes. And people like my partner Kalani doesn't like free trials because he says, I'll forget to turn it off when the time's up. I'm like, put it in your calendar. That's what I do. When I start a free trial, I'll put it a day or two before the trial ends just to remind myself to turn it off if I'm not moving forward with it. Yeah. And a lot of them are really good about sending you an email like, Hey, you know, you're two days away. Like, um, so not exactly related to making money online. I did, I accidentally did that with, um, Duolingo. I did their free, you know, two week trial. They sent me the email saying, Hey, you know, we're going to charge you the full subscription in a couple of days, blah, blah, blah. And I still didn't do it. And then I accidentally paid for a year of Duolingo, which, it's fine. Like I'm using it daily, so I'm not too upset about it. And it wasn't that expensive. Um, but typically, as long as you're checking your email daily, they're going to send you up like updates and, and warnings. Awesome. And then what are some alternatives to popular softwares? Um, so it depends on what we're talking about as far as softwares. But if we're talking about like office tools like Microsoft and whatnot, you really don't have to you know pay for Microsoft Office or anything like that. Um, I use what's called open office, uh, which is a good alternative and is usable in most things. If you have a 
G Drive, you have access to like Google Docs and things like that, which are free and it automatically saves. So those are great. Uh, graphic design tools, of course, you got Canva, which we love Canva. Um, you can also do video editing in Canva, which is fantastic. Um, and then, of course, CapCut, which is free and really, really good. For email, if you don't, you don't really want to use like a Gmail or anything like that if you're running a business, but Zoho is a really good free uh, email platform that you can use to register a professional email. Um, if you're doing project management, you can go with Trello or Asana, which both have really good free plans. And then CRMs, there's tons. So there's uh, System.io has a free version. I just said tons, but that's really the only one I can think of at the moment. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you're looking for CRMs, uh, System.io is a great one. It also has a course builder built in. It's got a funnel builder. Now, of course, the free it, with it being free, it is limited to what you can do um, or how many things you can do. But if you like it and you use it a lot and maybe it's successful and you want to branch out, then you could absolutely go ahead and pay for that one and, you know, can keep building out more stuff. Yeah. And if you're and if there's any other real estate professionals watching this, look for a brokerage that offers free like CRM tools and marketing tools that are available like that's a big thing to look for when you're interviewing different brokerages yeah for sure because some of the some of the real estate crms are really great but some of them are really expensive um but i mean the best crm is the one you're going to use right <laughs> something else to watch out for is you know subscriptions versus one-time purchases um so there are a lot of software that you can just outright you know purchase your membership um, or that'll do like a yearly discounted uh, fee. So weigh the options. Sometimes it is better to pay it all at once because you're going to save. Uh, but sometimes the, it only offers a monthly subscription or maybe the monthly subscription is so low that you don't really have the money to do the bulk, but it's okay because the monthly subscription isn't that bad. And then look for lifetime deals as well. Because a lot of times if you're getting a platform from somebody else, they'll have like a discount code or something like that that they can use or that you can use. Um, and that's always a good one to get. And sometimes they'll do, they'll even go so far as to be like, hey, pay this one time and never pay again. So like one of the um, money making, online money making things I have, like you can sign up to it as a monthly subscription for $14 or you can just pay for lifetime access for like, like 150 like it's something ridiculous where like it ends up being super crazy savings so always keep an eye open for those yeah you can wait for like holiday sales too um black friday cyber monday end of year that's usually a perfect time to snag some of these softwares and bundles check out different websites um like stack social for bundle deals and see if there's any educational discounts. Like if you're going to school, sometimes there's student discounts for certain sites. Yeah. Rakuten is another good one for that. So it's an extension that you um, add on to your, I believe it's Firefox. I don't think it's on Chrome. Um, but anytime you shop, it'll pop up. If it's, if that, platform as part of its program it'll pop up and be like hey you know you'll, you'll qualify for this much back or it'll tell you where you can go to get it cheaper so that one's good as well and then of course you know look into what are free ways to start monetizing so so often people will buy into courses and coaches and whatnot and then think that they have to buy all this extra stuff but really you know there's so many free ways to start making money there's youtube um, ManyChat is another free software that, I mean, it does have a subscription. Of course, all of these will have a, a fee to go above and beyond what you want to, uh, what the base level is. But ManyChat is a great tool to use with your Instagram. So that instead of saying, you know, link in the bio, you can be like, hey, comment this keyword and I'll send you whatever. And then you can set up that automation so you're not having to monitor your Instagram all the time. But, you know, YouTube, Instagram, uh, there's a new platform coming out that's similar to YouTube that I don't recall the name of but I've been seeing adverts for it recently so I'm looking into that one like any of these platforms that you can use for free to start building either a community you know Facebook even uh, either a community or an educational platform uh 
to eventually monetize are going to be beneficial. So instead of buying into like, say, school, which is a pretty popular one, but it charges about the same as a go high level subscription, um, instead of buying into that, you know, maybe build out your community on Facebook and then put all your educational information for your community on YouTube. And then, you know, then you're building the community and that YouTube monetization completely for free. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's great video editing tools in, you know, Facebook Reels, if that's what you're going for, TikTok, Instagram. And it's basically like, I rec my recommendation is start with these free softwares, like Rose said, to build your community. That kind of just makes sure that you're invested in whatever it is you're doing, that you stay consistent and you stay engaging with that new community. Because if you buy this hundreds of dollars uh, software system and you, you're you not consistent, you don't have a solid business plan in place, then you're just wasting all this cash on the software that you're not using. And then you're stressed out because your business isn't growing and you're paying for this. And you yeah. just, it's not a good, good feeling. No, I, like, I did it when I started too, because, you know, one of the programs I went through was like, okay, well, you need ClickFunnels, you need this, you need this, you need this. And ClickFunnels is not cheap, right? And so I had the subscription to ClickFunnels and then I paused it because I was like, I can't afford this right now. And also like, I'm not really utilizing it at the moment. And then I got System.io where I could build out funnel a funnel for free. And so I built out my funnel in there. And then I was like, well, I don't really need... Click funnels at all anymore so I think it was $97 a month with the, the subscription on to pause the subscription it was like $10 a month then I finally just fully canceled it because I was like I'm not really like I'm not going back mm -hmm. yeah gotta be very careful <laughs> yeah and it's also why it's super important that like you're analyzing your business from that perspective right whether it be a monthly check-in or a yearly check-in even looking at where you're allocating your funds and figuring out what's working, what's not, and where you can maybe trim the fat is really, really great. But yeah, that's about it, guys. I know it's super easy to, you know, get really excited about the online space and, and think you need to buy all these tools and whatnot, but be super smart about it. Um, do your research. Like that's one thing that I wish I'd been a little bit more on top of when I started was looking into free alternatives to a lot of these tools that they were selling. Because even if it's, you know, 10, $15 a month that adds up if you're buying four, five, six, you know, things that you don't really need. So do your research, check for free alternatives, make sure you're utilizing those free channel, uh, free trials, but also canceling them. And then analyze what's working and what's not for your business. Wait until you're actually making a profit to really start in investing in these higher level type uh, tools or invest in, you know, a team that's already using them and can help you, but that you know is good. Starting out can feel overwhelming, but saving on softwares is one of the easiest ways to keep your guys' budgets in check and focus on your growth. Um, if any of you have your favorite softwares that you like to use or saving tax, let us know on social media or in the comments. For sure. We'll, of course, link to everything that we uh, talked about here. Again, they are free softwares, so... They might be affiliate links for if you go for the upgraded one, but they all will have free accessibility. So, but that about wraps it up. So I hope you guys found these tips helpful. Um, if you know somebody who could use this video, you'll absolutely share it with them. And please do, you know, hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. It just helps more people find our podcast and it helps them with their financial journey. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. And then next week, Jess is going to talk to us about navigating finances with your partner. Mm -hmm.